And what we're going to do now is we're going to create a sphere once again, but instead of doing it in the um, Rhino Python script editor, we're going to do it inside of Grasshopper. Right? So uh, this is what the exact same script is going to re return, but it's going to be inside of Grasshopper now instead of just in Rhino. And we'll get into the specifics of why that might be interesting um, to, to, to create it this way as we actually produce our sphere. Okay, so um, whereas before we had the rhino.python editor in, that was floating above Rhino, now we're going to go into Grasshopper and then with the Python object actually start to create, a, create scripts that are floating above Grasshopper, right? So it's going to look very similar. A lot of the highlighting will be the same and the uh, basic elements here will be the same. Um, but we'll be doing it inside of Grasshopper. All right, so let's go ahead and um, build up our script in the Grasshopper editor. So I'm going to bounce back over to Rhino. All right, and if I, have, if I haven't already, I'm going to launch Grasshopper and close the Rhino Python editor. There's Grasshopper. Okay, and under math script, we're going to start by dropping the Python script object onto the canvas. Okay, so by default, you're going to get an orange object that has X and Y inputs and an A output. All right, so if you were, let's say, creating a sphere inside of Grasshopper, you would be going to the Surface tab under Primitive, define, uh, use a sphere object. And this is asking for the point and the radius, just as we did before, right? So let's go ahead and, uh, and create a sphere just in Grasshopper first so we can understand the difference. So if we were to go to Params, Geometry, Point, this, will, this is a point variable or a point container, and that will allow us to right-click and set one point and choose um, a point on the XY plane. There we have our little crosshair that represents our point that we just defined. So that if we connect our point into B, then we use a slider, which we'll use a shortcut to create a slider, a slider that's between one, so one less, I double-click on the canvas, and type in 1 less than 5.5 less than 25. Hit enter. That will create a slider for us with those extremes, 1 and 25. Connect that. Now we have a sphere, right? So that would, that's if we wanted to create this little sphere object in Grasshopper just by itself without scripting, right? But we're going to use that script to create a sphere as a way to compare how we would do this inside of Grasshopper. So one thing real quick is that our sphere looks jagged, and that's just a preview setting, and I want it to look nicer. So I'm going to go to my Grasshopper toolbar here and click this icon and say high quality. Now it looks a lot nicer. All right, so that's to create a sphere. Let's do that same thing in the Python editor. So if I were to double click the sphere object, there's nothing I can get to beyond that, right? The interface and the development of what I'm deciding to do happens at the level of the object. With any of the script components, which are found under math script, these objects are going to want you to define either an expression or a script inside of them to tell them what to do, right? So if you right click and say open editor, that opens up the Grasshopper Python script editor, right? So this is again a floating window that allows us to write our script, right? So if we wanted to, we could start by saying print hello world. If I do test, you'll see that it prints that down here, so this is just like the output window in the Rhino Python editor. All right, and um, let's replicate the um, 
the script that we did in Rhino to actually create the sphere. So the first thing that we're always going to do is bring in our Rhino script sy syntax. So let's type that in, import Rhino script syntax as RS. And then we wanted to um, define the center point. I'm going to use a comment here again. Define the center point. And then two lines later, I'm going to define the radius. Okay, now before we actually use the method to uh, rs.get point or rs.get real, right? Um, so we're going to have to modify that because it's not going to work in the same way here in Grasshopper. And then the last thing we were going to do is create the sphere. Okay, so if we were just going to replicate exactly what we did before, these, this is the pseudocode to do it. All right, so let's go ahead and um, hit OK. And um, everything should be fine with the object. All right, and let's then go back to make sure that everything works, right? Go, go ahead and open it again by double-clicking or right-click Open Editor. Okay, so our variable before was called my point, and we also had my radius. Okay, so whereas before we actually asked the user to define this, because we're in Grasshopper, we have to think about how we're asking for that information just a little bit more, right? That's not going to come from a command line prompt in the, in the Rhino interface, but it's going to come from Grasshopper, right? Now, luckily, our Python object actually has inputs already defined here, right? So that's where we're going to define our user-based input, is into X and into Y, right? So for my point, let's say that we want to use whatever comes in as into X as the input for my point, and whatever comes in from Y, that's going to go into my radius, right? Then at the end, when we create our sphere, we can do rs.addSphere, open parentheses, my point, comma, my radius, close parentheses. So if I click test, all right, um, we're going to get a little error, but that has to do with the fact that we haven't actually supplied any inputs here for X or Y. But otherwise, I think we're going to be okay. So let's hit OK, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete my sphere object, and we're going to bring our object up here, and we're going to put our point input into X and our slider into Y. Okay, so now our object was red. Now it's turned gray. So let's go ahead and drop in a panel from params input panel. And out is essentially the output window that we had in the Rhino script in the Rhino Python editor. Um, so this is a way to send out messages um, if you're working with your object here. Okay, so um, we've got a point that's our center point. We've got a slider that's our radius, and we have an object that has a script inside of it that seems like. Um, that seems like it should be working, right? It's exactly like how we typed it before. Okay, so if we had to think a little bit differently about how we are gathering our inputs, the other thing that's a little bit different is that we have to define how we're going to return our outputs, right? Right now, out is always going to give us information relative to the script, like the command line print. Um, so let's go back into our editor. So right click, open editor. We have to do one more step here, which is not only create it, like if we were doing it in Rhino, it would be created and we'd see it, but we have to actually um, return the sphere to the output. And this is where we start getting into things that are specific, but not 
uh, to uh, scripting inside of Grasshopper that you wouldn't do just in Rhino. All right, so we're going to return the sphere to the output. And the way that we're going to do that is that we need to um, use the letter A, which is the variable for the output, as A. And we need to set it equal to um, the sphere, right? Which right now we're not storing it. We're just creating it, right? And that's why this object looked like it was working, but we didn't see anything in the viewport. So what we're going to do is we're going to say my sphere is actually going to store rs.addSphere. And then A can be set to my sphere. So there's one extra step where we're first storing the final thing that we want to create. Then we return it to the output of the Python object. So A equals my sphere. Hit OK. Now we have a sphere in the Rhino viewport, which is actually grasshopper geometry. It's a preview. So I can modify my slider value, which is changing my radius. And I could reassign my points if I wanted to. And now I'm getting the current version of that sphere based on the inputs um, that I'm supplying here in X and Y. Alright, so this is your very first uh, script inside of Grasshopper.